there's a story about uh, for-profit colleges and what the Obama administration has done with them, and it is incredibly instructive. Okay, so let's find out how Washington works. Well, uh, in the beginning, uh, what they had proposed, the administration and Department of Education, was uh, pretty strict rules on the for-profit colleges because it looked like there were a lot of scams that were being run. Uh, a lot of kids would not really get a, a good quality education. They couldn't get a job afterwards, and they had these tremendous debts. And the reason that these for-profit colleges are even in business is because they're taking government money, right, to say that they're giving an education that sometimes they don't give at all, and they're certainly not helping the kids to get jobs. So, hey, it was great news that the Obama administration was taking that seriously and looking into it. Now, on previous days, we've told you that some of their top donors are from for-profit colleges. In fact, they just put out a press release, almost a press release, a leak that was coordinated saying, hey, we are looking out for the donors from for-profit colleges. They almost brag about it. Well, great investigative story on Huffington Post. Uh, Robert Sherman is a former deputy undersecretary of education. When they asked him about, hey, it looks like the new rules now are totally watered down, Here's what he said, quote, it is absolutely accurate to say that they caved to the industry. But I understand the political dynamics of being in an admi administration and needing to take a step forward in the face of a hostile Congress. The right thing for this issue is for it to survive. So that is a startling admission where he just says, yeah, we caved into industry, the lobbyists were too tough, and we caved into them. Uh, but hey, look, it, at least it survived. I mean, that is exactly the Obama mindset. Now, Huffington Post explains, and let me quote them here, the general thing of what happened here. They say, quote, The industry's lobbying was so well-financed and well-coordinated that it altered the view of what was possible inside the Obama administration. The focus shifted from seeking to craft the strongest rule to instead making do with incremental progress and avoiding the sort of action that would trigger con congressional intervention aimed at protecting the industry. Okay, so that is a perfect description of what happens inside the Obama administration. Sometimes they come out strong and then the lobbyists come in and go, oh, you better not do it, and I've got the guys in Congress that are bought, you better water down your bill, and they do water it down. Now you're saying, all right, look, that's the Huffington Post summarizing and you got an insider from the administration, but is that all you have? No, this is definitive. Now, next person, is a current administration official, and he says, uh, with you know, he says it anonymously, so he doesn't get fired. "Quote: There was an atmosphere that if the opponents in Congress felt that the wind was at their backs, it would not be too difficult for them to take action. In some ways, there is a decision to make: How do you provide a good level of protection for students and ensure that you put a good regulation out there that's not going to get overturned in one congressional cycle?" You see what they think every single time. Ah, we could do something strong, but then somebody might water it down, or somebody might kill it, or it might not pass. So let's preemptively water it down ourselves. We keep the lobbyists happy, we keep our donors happy, and then we don't get Congress yelling at us. This is a terrible mindset. But it's not just that. Look at this. Now, Arne Duncan, the Secretary of Education, says this, quote, The new rules are both thoughtful and reasonable. They reflect a great input from the industry, he just admits it, right? And they are designed to give career colleges every opportunity to reform without letting them off the hook. The feedback was extraordinarily helpful, we took it very seriously, and hopefully many folks will see their comments, were listened to, and acted upon. He's telling the press, we took the lobbyists so seriously, and I'm telling you, and we changed the legislation based on what the lobbyists told us to do, and I hope that they are satisfied with how much they've gotten us to change the legislation. Oh, this is embarrassing. This is how our system works. But you see both sides of it. The Obama administration's profound weakness, and yes, Congress is bought. And, and it is a reality they got to deal with Congress, and Congress uh, often will overturn what they did. In fact, there are examples of that. Represent, in this case, Representative John Klein, Republican of Minnesota, introduced a budget amendment that aimed to block the Department of Education from releasing the gainful employment regulation, which was part of the, the t tough reforms that they were going to do. And who was he backed up by? Well, uh, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and Democratic National Committee Chairwoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Why? Well, the for-profit colleges donate a tremendous amount of money overall but specifically to the Democrats. Now, the Republicans are always on board. You run some sort of scam where you get money from the government, they love it. 
They pretend to be free market, but if you're ripping off the government, the Republicans are your best friend. Even if you don't give them that much money, they just ideologically love the idea of the government getting ripped off. You think I'm exaggerating? Here's Jim DeMint, the guy who's the head of the Tea Party, the guy who says, oh my God, free market this, free market that. He introduced an amendment to an economic development bill that would nullify the gainful employment rule, which was the toughest part of that provision. Now remember, these are people sucking off the government and then not really delivering an education, okay? And Jim DeMint wants to protect them. And so these guys are smart. They give a third of their money to the Republicans and they figure we got them in the bag anyway. They'll do anything a private corporation tells them to do. And then we give two thirds of the money to the Democrats, we buy them. And so if President Obama actually wanted to do something, which he at the beginning did want to do something right, uh, then we'll scare him with Congress and he'll back down. And that's exactly what happened. All right. Uh, by the way, one more quote for you. Um, if we go back to Sherman now, the former Department of Education official, he says, quote, they still probably made the political calculation they needed to make, referring to the administration. This is so weak, referring to the bill as it stands now, this is so weak that if Congress overturns it while continuing to play lip service to the need to protect taxpayers and students, it would be a complete and total outrage. Again, right there in a nutshell, he's saying, don't worry, the Obama administration made the bill so pathetically weak that it would be kind of embarrassing if people voted against it at this point, right? And besides which, it doesn't really do anything. By the way, so what were the things they were going to do? They were going to say, hey, listen, you need to prove that these kids are actually getting jobs. That was the gainful employment part that DeMint hated and, and the Democrats and the Republicans tried to kill in the House, right? So that, what happened to that? Gone. Gone. Now, what do they have to do? they have to inform the students that they might be incurring a lot of debt. <laughs> That's a big deal. They're going to write in this you know, tiny little uh, print, oh, by the way, as you sign up for this college, you might incur a lot of debt. And they say, before this kid signs up for the college, there's got to be a three-day waiting period. Ooh, a three-day waiting period. And then some of the jokers in the article from the administration come out, and they're like, well, that'll make them think twice. We really got them. So in the end, what happened? There was the pretense of doing something. There was a lot of talk about how the Obama administration got tough on these for-profit colleges and the scams that they're running. But in the end, they actually did nothing. The, weak, the bill was so weak, it accomplished nothing that anyone could object to. So did the kids go to those colleges win? Absolutely not. Did the taxpayer win? Oh, we're getting ripped off, huge. No, we lost. Who won? The lobbyists, the for-profit colleges, the Democrats and the Republicans.